meeting. I turned it closed. <laughs> All right, so let's. We got a new recruit in our midst today. We got one going out and one coming in. So let's start on this side of the table and introduce ourselves. And we'll it on. We met at the we dinner have, that yeah. we had. My name is Sue Adam. I've been on uh, the board for just over four years. So I think March of 2024, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm Devin Cron. I've been on the board for uh, three months, two months, <laughs> two months, <laughs> two months now. Um, that's what I got. <laughs> I'm Raj Saini, I'm the deputy chief here. Uh, I've been here eight, nine months. I am uh, Donovan Fisher, chief, and I've been here Uh, year and six months, seven months now. So, welcome. Right. Easing your way in. Three days and six hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got the timer going. <laughs> uh, John Dirty, I'm the mayor and chair of the board. I'm Lena Horsville, and I, I was I joined after Sue, so I think it's my third year. Jane Pyers, uh, Lena on, and I yeah. came on at the same time, so three, three years ish. Great. I'm Lindsay McKay, and I'm grateful to be part of your meeting today as a guest, and I look forward to working together in the future. Excellent. Okay, so we'll start off the meeting in our usual way with the uh, Aboriginal acknowledgement. <clears throat> and we would like to acknowledge the land in which we are gathered, it is the traditional territory of the Tanaha. Silex and Silex peoples, and is home to Metis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honor their connection to the land and rivers and respect the importance of the environment to our site as a community. And with that, I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Lena, Sue, all in favor? Thank you very much. So, next up is to adopt the minutes of the uh, board meeting on January, July 13th. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's so here the package. Sue, so, thank you. Devin, thank you. All in favor? Carried, thank you. This is a writing from the previous meeting. Um, Chief Constable's report. Report it says here. That's good. Yeah, well, there's lots of them tonight. You should have asked earlier, but uh, is there any way you can bring up any pictures from some of the events? I was thinking I should have asked that a day or two. Oh, we can. We try. No pressure. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Okay, good. That's a good idea. Uh, so, in regards to the BC and BC ACP, much like uh, most things over the summer, it's been pretty quiet. They've uh, shut down, although we've had a few side meetings on special uh, items, um, but nothing specific to report on other than the fact that uh, the meetings are starting up again and some of the committees should be starting again right away, one of which uh, on the the Mental Health Addictions Committee, which we have a meeting in you know, for two weeks. And uh, we've also set up I'm the chair of the Cybercrime Committee. So we, we've just been struggling getting some dates that work for people, but I think we've got something early October now. So we should have some, a few things to report on the next meeting. Uh, in regards to community policing, um, the deputy and myself have been quite busy over the last uh, month or two attending a number of community events. We're invited to attend uh, a barbecue at the Lakeview Seniors Complex. Fortunately, that was the week I was off uh, moving, but the deputy attended and uh, some of the things went well and had a good turnout. Good turnout, good food. Good conversation. Yeah. Uh, the deputy also attended and continued to work with the Nelson Fire Department on the city's emergency management uh, department and a number of other agencies that are involved with that and uh, just planning for potential disasters, uh, clarifying the roles, coming up with processes that will make it efficient, especially around the piece of evacuation, which is always quite uh, chaotic. And the best laid plans are uh, often have to be sort of uh, altered on the fly because of changing conditions and uh, unforeseen events. And, uh, from experience when I say oftentimes a number of resources that you have committed to do certain things so uh, when the disaster hits are uh, often nowhere to be found so it's it's, uh, it's it's good to do this planning um we've been at it for a while and uh, we're 
planning on doing some mock exercises in the, in the next month or so. So uh, on August 24th, we met with the Kootenai Pride Planning Committee. Um, Lena and Devin were also uh, attended that meeting with us. Um, this was just to discuss uh, safety planning, some of the logistics of the upcoming Pride Parade. And, uh, just, I thought it was a very positive meeting and productive meeting. And, uh, I think went really well and uh, translated into a, I think from a leasing perspective, uh, a very successful event. Um, I participated in the, in a meeting with Nelson Next, which is the, for those who don't know, is the climate action group for the city, um, focusing on the, uh, the climate action plan and a particular MPD's role where we fit into that plan and some of the contribute to the uh, climate action group and climate action plan for the city. Uh, the deputy and I attended the uh, Pride 2S LGBTQ plus crosswalk painting on Sunday, August the 28th. Um, very much appreciated uh, the, especially the restorative justice stuff that attended and, uh, and helped with that and for Kathy in particular who uh, suggested there are RJ coordinator, but she uh, did a lot of the prep work and arranging. She got the paid for us and stuff. So a special thanks to her. Uh, it was a nice morning. We had a lot of fun painting. Um, Sandy, our apprentice, attended as well. Uh, Sandy was shaking paint and shook half the can out oh. to her fans. So that was a moment of levity. But luckily, <laughs> no. in her favorite shoes, by the way. But she uh, oh, yeah. in a rainbow pattern. Yeah. 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 Here's the yellow. It's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, luckily it all it all seemed to come out pretty good. You could already tell, and I think the sidewalks turned out pretty good. A few, a few squiggly lines here and there, but uh, it's nice and bright. I've got my window I can see it every day. So. Yeah. Uh, the deputy and constable Kristen Young also arranged to get uh, an inclusive pride flag that uh, we raised at the department's flagpole. So that's been flying for the better part of the week. I think it's down now, but yeah, we need to get our flagpole painted. But it's nice of them to arrange that. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. Sunday, September the 4th. There's a paint crew there, too. Oh. <laughs> On Sunday, September the 4th, uh, we were able to garner a number of extra resources, including several reserve officers on foot and on bikes. And the deputy and myself also attended and assisted with the, the Pride Parade and traveled along with the route. And uh, we had one of the sergeants come in to uh, act as incident commander and oversee the ops plan and coordinate resources as were required. Very happy to report that there was no coordination really needed for uh, anything other than just uh, escorting the parade and uh, taking part in a successful and fun event. So far, the feedback that we've gotten on site and from a number of people that uh, I talked to after the parade, uh, it's all been very positive. And appreciate the police attending, so very nice in that respect. And uh, yeah, it turned out to be a, a good fun day with no incidents. Uh, Monday, September the 5th, myself and Raj were invited to attend the Odom celebration. Uh, correct me if I say anything wrong, but it's uh, they're uh, a southwest uh, area in India, and the celebration is for King Kabali and uh, Kahabali, sorry, that uh, <laughs> was the demon god, which get a big long story about it, but it was pretty interesting that they had a demon king. Uh, who apparently though was very benevolent and good to the area farmers and uh, it's a celebration of the harvest and his return. So it was a uh, it was another quite fun event. Uh, lots of music, singing, dancing. They had a number of people playing different musical instruments, a number of speeches, um, and then the, the event for our part anyways topped off with a traditional meal, which was uh, a number of different uh, spices and. Uh, this is where she turned over to you to explain it. Oh, it was good. It was good food. Um, <laughs> I, went and I was getting instructions. There was a lot of instructions, but it was it was hard to hear. There was the music and stuff was going. So, but I think it turned out all right. It's supposed to be served on a banana leaf, but they have uh, paper banana leaves that they brought her. So, um, again, uh, just it was a really positive experience. And, uh, you know, Raj and I were talking about this today. Just some of the stuff that you get to go and do as the chief and the deputy that uh, kind of reinforced the 
you know the positive side of policing and why you know why we do this job. So it was uh, fantastic. Uh, Roger showed me some of the posts on their Facebook page and stuff today that were also very positive and appreciative of, of us attending. But I think we're the ones who are appreciative of being invited and being able to take part. Is it a well attended event? Uh, yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Look, if I've seen some photos on yeah. social media, it looks like, it looks like a lot of fun. So, yeah. So where was the event? The it was in the upstairs, the Mickey McEwen um, Hall and the Rod Real Gun Club. Oh. Yeah. It was a little warm. You didn't know about it? No. No, I didn't know anything about it. I'm not part of the Indian community. <laughs> like none of the stories mean mean anything to me. I had students that weren't in attendance for Stacey School because they were just celebrating too late into the night oh, Monday night. Yeah. So. So between the packed crowd and the heat in there, and then the spicy food on top of it, I was uh, sweating. Yeah, you're enjoying the food when you do that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he's enjoying yeah. the spices. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like spicy food. I usually warn people before I start. It's like, okay, I'm gonna be sweating. I'm not having a heart attack. Dripping off my nose. I saw the post. That was good. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah. It's on, I think there's a, a, a page, Sorry, page. I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? Siri's talking Seriously. to me, I'm not talking to her. Seriously. She's part of the public. Yeah. <laughs> so it, there's, a, there's a reference page for those of you who have your agendas on page 8, but uh, Deputy Saini will be one of several prestigious yeah. presenters on the upcoming yeah. National Indigenous Policing 2022 conference that's being held in Ottawa this year. Um, just because of resources and time constraints, Rogers graciously agreed to do it virtually so that uh, so he could be here, but that's on September the 22nd. This is the one you're going to? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I've got to confuse you. <laughs> I thought you were going to be there. Okay, they're in person, which is great. I'm glad to get to go in person. Uh, he's presenting on systemic discrimination, segregation, harassment, uh, racism, and policing. I've been able to attend this uh, conference in the past, so glad uh, not only it gets to go in person, but uh, that uh, we're privileged. I think that, uh, you know, to have the Nelson Police name yeah, out there and be presenting on the national yeah. course. I'm wondering if we can get a copy of that, the board. Can we get a copy of the presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Like no pressure right now, but you know, later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I can practice with us if you want. Yeah. Uh, on September the seventh, so today, uh, I participated in a it was to do with the, the, the other email of this. It was a homeless training uh, webinar, and uh, it was on compassionately managing problematic behaviors and specifically dealing around with uh, homelessness, addictions, and stuff. It was just kind of the introductory lesson. They've got a number of other ones, so I'm hoping to continue on with it. But uh, they were talking about the effects of trauma on the brain, the amygdala, um, the way that causes people to uh, misperceive the, the level of threat, the stimuli that it comes with. And uh, just one of the, the one of the things that stuck out to me that I thought was pretty interesting was uh, talking about people's time horizons, where normal people, you know, their time horizons is several months, if not years, and even Decades down the road, thinking about uh, vacation next year, Christmas plans, all the way to retirement stuff. Whereas a number of people in these situations, their their time horizon or event horizon is usually doesn't exceed 24 hours. Like they're just looking for their next meal or their next where they're going to stay and some of the things like that, the basic necessities of life kind of thing. So the the, the catalyst then for that is the the real. Um, effect of uh, consequences or deterrence on people like because that's too far it's outside of their time horizon so it doesn't really have the impact that it has on other people so they're just talking about how you need to kind of understand uh, that's the effect you're dealing with and uh, different ways to maybe uh, address or explain things to, to people in those situations so i'm looking forward to being able to kind of see what the next couple of lessons bring but it was worth mentioning um, the last thing I know, the community policing uh, just a little bit into the future, but this Friday, uh, the department and like Raj and I again will be assisting with the Road Kings parade. 
uh, nice to have that back on uh, on the schedule for the year again. Obviously, uh, a couple of years of shutdown because of COVID and stuff, but uh, parade on Friday and then a static display around town. I think on uh, Baker, I believe, uh, was in the plan set up all day Saturday, so so we'll have some extra foot patrol and people in close. On the policing part, thing. you've been busy, very busy. <laughs> yeah, it's been steady. I, yeah. I have a feeling, for some reason, I think I'm forgetting. Oh, so, no, okay, I didn't realize all this stuff. <laughs> um, so the Nelson Police Foundation, not too much to update on that, other than we're still working on the plans for the 125th anniversary uh, gala. I think they've uh, nailed down like the MC for the night and the Viper and a few of those kinds of things. Uh, I don't know the MC, but it sounds like he does a pretty good job. Uh, Reg Clarkson. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think he works for Bell for Golf Course. He's, 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 he's done that Run. before. Oh, Granite, Granite. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Did auction here, I think, for a while, too. Yeah. So it was good, yeah, good yeah. humor. Take the pressure yeah, off me. Yeah. Come up with a good humorous speech. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, the fundraising portion of that and a few other initiatives uh, will be basically based around the theme of keeping the citizens of Nelson safe for 125 years and for the future. Um, there are a few initiatives and programs that I think fall under this, including the proposal to bring uh, the community safety officer program into the department. It's just the ability to deploy these officers for regular foot patrol, officer present at community events, park patrols, a uh, number of school initiatives we'd like to get going again, and the ability to assist with uh, minor um, persons' crimes um, and other uh, investigations. So, uh, thefts, found property, mischief, things like just things like that. So that uh, you know, nothing where there's going to be violence or probably a, a conflict situation. Um, we're still working on the uh, the business case for that program, but uh, I think there's a lot of value in it and uh, value in both the uh, ability to have an officer present at a lot more functions, uh, ability to have uh, a presence back in the schools, and I think we can do it a value to the taxpayer kind of approach where we're not paying like a fully a trained and operable police officer that uh, now we can keep deployed on some of the other matters that are more needed for a police officer to be at. So I think it'll help with some of the resourcing issues and uh, to divert some of those tasks to a more appropriate level of response, but still having it be a uh, police department uh, representation at it. Uh, the crime stats and the crime severity index was uh, out uh, seems like several months ago now it's been so busy but it's, uh, it's only been a couple of weeks um, so the crime severity index results for 2021 show a significant decline in the number and the severity of criminal incidents that have occurred in Nelson in 2021 uh, as compared to previous years so as per uh, agenda info the lowest uh, it's the lowest it's been since 1998 and lower than both the provincial and the national average for uh, the scores and the crime severity index. Um, overall, the city's ranking on the uh, national scale dropped by 30 places, uh, and that was both on violent crimes and nonviolent uh, property crimes and the overall placement. So to, to drop 30 places, which you know, in this case, uh, dropping rankings is a good thing, so that we've dropped down 30 places is a, a pretty a uh, significant move and I think a positive thing for the, uh, the crime level in the city. Um, would say though the call volume, um, although calls related to criminal code offenses are down, call volumes for the department continue to see uh, year over year increases. Uh, for example, the total calls for service in August of this year are up approximately 17%, uh, which is an increase of almost 100 calls month of August than there was in the month of August in 2021. Uh, this coupled with the fact that we have been running uh, significantly short staff, the increase in call load has significantly increased the call load per member. So the members themselves are carrying a, a higher file, file load than they would have been in previous years. Um, the officers of the department remain busy, but I think they're 
providing an excellent service to the community and good value for the city's tax dollars. So, so it's a, it's overall a good story, but as I said, it's there's a number of other factors that keep the officers busy. Can you can you um, make any comments about hate crime that's up across the country? Like, a, do you, any any comments on that related to Nelson? Uh, I'd have to look at it a little closer to. Yeah. I, could, I could, I guess, guess uh, some of the things from from my view of what I've seen over the last year. I think somewhat like everywhere, there's there's been some increase, but to say it's been, you know, more or less than what kind of what we're seeing across the country, I'd have to look at. Okay. Well, while you're looking at that, maybe sexual assault too. Yeah. I'm being curious about that one. Yeah, any questions? It's interesting when I look through this report, and I have to admit I didn't go into great detail when you get to the bottom here, you can actually take out each, each uh, table. But every headline with exceptions of one, which is the last one, police report of where offense to continue to increase rates of homicide among indigenous people. Increased national homicide rate increased, rate of violent and non-violent criminal code of firearms offenses are up. Hit motivated crimes right risen sharply. <laughs> uh, there's a couple more headlines here. Sexual assault up again. It's interesting that it's say that this was all sort of down, but it's actually it seems like it's up. You say nationally, nationally or nationally, nationally, yeah. Nationally, yeah. but not locally. Yeah, nationally. So. Yeah. I wonder if um, what impact COVID has on this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, I think it became less of an impact as we went through the pandemic. It certainly had an impact that first year. So I think I think it had a probably a more negative impact and probably increased some of the crime stats towards the end of the pandemic just because of. Spin-off effect of being a number of people being isolated or, or kept into you know, indoors and you know, smaller groups. There was uh, great concern, although I haven't seen specific numbers on it. But uh, domestic violence domestic was violence, serious. Yeah. You know, there were serious concerns about mm -hmm. that during the pandemic. So, thank you. Any further questions? Huh? Um, Deputy Chief. Mine's going to be very brief. Uh, sort of just a couple things. Uh, once again, Chief already touched on it. Kathy did a tremendous job with the sidewalk and the paint donated. Um, so, you know, big uh, round of applause for her. Um, the owner program is going to start commencing in the schools in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so, we pause uh, working on that. She's worked with the SDA board to get that rolling out. And RJ files continue to increase, and I'll provide a further update on our statistical. Composition here in general. That's my point. Excellent. It was Nelson Farm Supply. Yes, Nelson Farm Supply donated the paint. Great work. Yes. Thanks. Um, Liz, are you hearing us okay? Um, I don't know much of a report myself. I don't know as much of it. To be honest with you. But uh, what I will say is uh, to both the uh, Chief and the deputy, the uh, feedback we're getting in the community, it seems that like you two are everywhere. <laughs> and people are really appreciative of your um, your outreach. I know in some cases that's it, it was necessitated for numerous reasons, but having said that, I just want to ask Chair of the Board, thank you very much for your hard work. And it seemed like it didn't matter the day of the week, you were out here in the evenings, etc. So thanks for your thanks. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple of um, some correspondence here. Thank you. So if anybody wants to speak to them, you're welcome to do so. Okay. New business, board of awards, commemoration committee, T terms of reference. Yep, read through it. Recommendation um, to accept the terms yep, of reference. Yep, so, so moved. Second by Jane, all in favor? Thank you very much. 
I have a I have a question. So yeah. I, I see that like this this uh, board that's going to be like a committee is going to be created. When do we? I know, I'm so just asking that. When when does that happen? Like when when will we be talking about like actually forming the committee? I'm going to put the committee list on next meeting. So you'll have a list of all the committees. Okay. I thought we'd wait till Lindsay was sworn in and then you guys can discuss which committees you would like. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the committees exist, right? Like, yes. You have a new committee. Yeah, there's all, there's all sorts of committees, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The actual list, if there's anything the board wishes to pull out of that, you're more than welcome to do so. Hearing none, we we'll move on and ask for adjournment. Again, second. All pair.